All right, guys, welcome back to another G-Side Trace Tech video. In this video, we're just gonna run through five quick tips that you should keep in mind of, think about before buying your G-Side Trace Tech tray and canopy. All right, so tip number one, uh, what car is actually best suited to you? So when you think about what car you actually want, uh, you also gotta think about the budget of the car as well. Uh, so domestics, they're sitting at roughly about 80 grand, even upwards of that in the domestic market. So your Rangers, your Hiluxes, uh, your Navs, all that. But you've got your Americans as well. Now your Americans are kind of a different playing field when it comes to cars in the budget field. You've got 200 grand for your Ram 2500s. You can get a little bit lower with your Ram 1500s, but everybody kind of goes for those bigger American trucks when they think payload and durability. So thing number two to think about is after you've decided what your car is, what are you gonna use it for? Is this gonna be a full-time tour? Is this gonna be a half-time tour? If so, maybe the way is the American way. You want the big truck, you want the luxurious seats, you want that comfortable feeling, and you want the massive canopy that comes along with it. Yes, you might have to dive into GVM, but that is something for later on. But this is kind of your full-time touring system. Uh, you got, you know, your Evercool along with your Bushman, you got heaps of fridge capacity, you got drawers, you got a full kitchen there, a pantry, uh, all the pretty much luxuries that you need for full-time touring, even half-time touring. This is kind of the system that you would want. All right, so coming over here to this domestic, we've got a PY Ranger, the next end Ranger. It's got the 1640 deck space tray here. It's got the 1260 canopy. In my opinion, this is probably the best walk and play setup that you're ever gonna see on the market. You got plenty of drawer space. It's got the Evercool on the other side. You got some pocket storage down the side here and the reef, um, the seal and basket. You got a little bit of space in the back. It's pretty much everything you can cram in here. Go to your job sites, slap in your tools, and then hit up Bravey Beach later that night. So if you're a weekender, I think this is the perfect setup. So let's talk about the elephant in the room. Let's talk about suspension. So it's a massive thing at the end of the day. How high do you really want your car? So as you can see behind me, this behemoth of a car, um, I can barely reach the drawers. I can't see what's inside of it. I can't get to my Evercool. I can't use the kitchen properly. But this car is not built for me. It's built for someone else. And they thought ahead. They put the airbags, they put a full Kelderman system. So this thing can be lowered just as high as a two inch lifted domestic. If that's not something you want to do, but and you're going down the domestic route, then the two inch is perfect. You don't have to lower it, you don't have to raise it. It is always a comfortable height no matter what you do. If you've got a full-time tour, yes, the Kelderman system is probably the best way to go because you want that high clearance. You want to cruise on the highways very comfortably. If it was up to me, but I would have the domestic, I would do a two inch and call it a day. I think that would be very comfortable for me. I wouldn't be struggling having to lower my car every time I want to use stuff. If I was a tradie and I wanted to throw tools in, the car's not too high all the time. It depends what you want. It depends how high you really need it. And a big thing is GVM. Are you gonna have it? Are you not? If you're gonna go down the GVM route, then yes. With the full-time tours, you're gonna need that GVM. You're gonna need the Kelderman. You're gonna have to have it lifted and all those things to think about as well. So topic number four to think about. At the end of the day, it is weights. How heavy is your car gonna be? Once you've added all these things on, what are you gonna have on it? Are you gonna have the bill bar, the snorkel, roof racks, all the alternative accessories other than your train canopy? Your rooftop tents, your awnings, it all adds weight. So, are you gonna go down that GVM route? Are you not? So, you really have to compile every single accessory. You gotta think about your passengers. Are you a full-time touring family? Are you just a bachelor on the solar roads, on the beaches by yourself? You gotta think about fuel, water, all those type of things accounted for in your build before you decide at the end of the day what you actually want. So other than GVM, you've also got rear axle weight. How much weight can your chassis actually take past the point uh, with all your train canopy accessories, with your rooftop tent, how much weight is sitting on the back of your car? That's another thing to think about. You've also got GCM. Are you gonna be towing a full-time caravan? If you're a full-time tourer, you most likely are. So you gotta think about what's on your car before you put it on the back of your car. There's also shows, you can go around, ask questions, how heavy is this? How is it gonna affect my car? Ask people on the street. If they got the accessory that you want, maybe ask how they found it. Uh, there's a million trade stores to go to, there's a million questions to be asked, so just reach out. 
And at the end of the day, when you got all your accessories, everything that you want and desire, if you're handy with Excel, that's a perfect thing to use the calculator within that, get the weights, put your GVM, or just old school, write it all down, crunch all the numbers and figure out what's it gonna be at the end. Last but not least, the last thing to think about, number five, is what sacrifices are you willing to make? All the points that we just ran through, once you've got everything figured out, you might have to take some things out to get your dream canopy. You might have to take some things out your canopy to get your bill bar. You never know what you might have to subtract or add um, at the end of the day. If you get your full-time tour, you might have to get a light rigid license, it means no more bevies on the roads, no more cheeky beers at the pub and on your way. Those are sacrifices. So. Here's pretty much an example of the sacrifices made to get what this customer wanted at the end of the day, still do his dream passion of going to work, throwing his tool in, and then going out and camping. He's tucked the batteries in at the front of the car. He's made it very minimalistic, but he's gotten everything he wanted. So really think about what you actually need, what you actually want, write it all down, maybe pros and cons list of each item. Do you actually need a full bill bar? Do you need that rooftop tent that's heavier than the more, uh, others? So those are the things you think about at the end of the day. And once you've compiled all of it, it gives you a better understanding and idea of the real fine sacrifices that you need. All right, guys, that wraps up uh, the video of five things you kind of have to think about before diving in to your uh, GCI Traytech train canopy build. We can't really give you all the answers. We're just kind of here to make you understand what things to look out for. We understand that it's very overwhelming when it comes to your big trucks or even just your domestics, but we're here to help along the way uh, to get your train canopy built out there. So if you want to give us a call on our number uh, or even visit us, we've got a showroom at 1 8 Freight Street here in Yatla. Uh, we've got a little display upstairs. Uh, we can run through bills with you as well. Um, or even hit us up on our email, our socials. We've got the YouTube, Instagram, and even Facebook. And yeah, can't wait to have a chat.